them. No. Make yourself comfortable. Okay, thank you. Okay, and we're starting. Hello, welcome back. This is the William and Daniel Show. And today is our first podcast episode featuring Introduce Yourself. Hi, I'm Audrey Peh. And I'm the founder and executive director of WeTech Women in Technology. Yes, so let's get started. So we've got a couple of questions here, but of course we can like, you know, if you wanna talk about anything else, we can incorporate it. So first question, um, correct well you've just explained, but your company is called WeTech. Mm-hmm. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more about that? Okay, so WeTech is a community organization that promotes and celebrates women in technology, um, acknowledging that one in four people in tech are women and that there's a huge gender gap in that field. So basically what WeTech does is that it celebrates successful women in tech and shares their stories through feature interviews and the first women in tech conference stated for next year. Okay. Um, like what, do you, what what got you into like tech stuff? Mm-hmm. Like what like inspired you to like mm-hmm. create WeTech and like do this. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, it's so disturbing. I saw his name walk past. Okay, continue. Okay, um, so growing up, I placed a lot of importance on role models. Mm-hmm. So, for example, like, when it comes to academics, like, I look for, I look up to Hermione Granger and, like, when it came, co- came to tennis, mm-hmm. and the, I, like, idolized Serena Williams. But when it, I tried thinking of women in tech to look up to, I came up blank. Mm-hmm. So... With that, I made a simple Google search of like, who are the women in tech? Where are the women in tech? And I found out about the gender gap and how it's not just in terms of representation that it's detrimental to women, but also in terms of pay. Because for the same amount of work that they do, women in tech are paid like 18 to 22% less than their male counterparts, which isn't fair at all. So it's something that I really felt strongly about. And I said to myself, if I want to work in this field, and if I want equality in this field, then I better start doing something <laughs> about it. Okay, so we did some background research on the multiple articles on you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and we found out that your aspirations in the future are to pursue a career in science journalism. Is this right? That's right. Well, you okay. want to explain why? Okay. <laughs> so sassy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Okay, so science journalism is this field that incorporates communicating ideas related to science and innovation to the masses. And when I first discovered it through this, I think, article in the Atlantic or some publication, I was really drawn to the idea of making science relatable to not just, you know, the high ups who rub elbows with each other and publish these scholarly articles. I think growing up, I've always loved science and math and have acknowledged that a lot of people don't feel the same way about it. And I think it's because people don't really understand it and that the potential that like science can be used to you know, make a difference. Because if we stop thinking of science and math as, okay, like just calculus and like a way to like torture the minds of <laughs> teenagers, and instead like translated that to, okay, science can help solve the water crisis in Africa or give like, Filipino children electricity, that's when we really like make the connections and sort of encourage more people our age to think, okay, science is pretty cool. So that's why I want to go into science journalism. I want to be able to write about scientific phenomena, write about innovation, tech, and whatnot, anything related to science that can really help people. And I want more people to know about it and share the same enthusiasm that I have. Um, since you're a new student to the BSM community, uh, how do you feel the BS- BSM has like either helped you or like mm-hmm. held you back from being able to achieve like what you wanted to achieve with WeTech or like if there's anything that the school could do better or anything in your views? Okay, um, so being a new student always has its challenges. I think like coming in to a community where in it's where it was very very different to where I came from. My old school multiple intelligence. I was with for... Is that the hall? No, not the hall. <laughs> no. Shucks. Just a bit, tad, tad bit off in okay. Quezon City, a very <laughs> far away place. <laughs> um, I had like an entirely different environment in the sense that everybody 
was almost everyone was Filipino. Everybody wanted to just like stay here, aspire for like UP and Ateneo. And then, you know, it, there was a standard path that was sort of set. And by moving to BSM, I definitely like went out of my comfort zone in terms of just like doing the IB, making friends like with people from so many different backgrounds. And I think sure. because you both are somewhat like third culture kids, right? Yeah. Like you definitely get that feeling of like, being exposed to like different cultural identities so i think that in itself like bsm didn't necessarily say okay here's what we're giving you like it we're not they didn't like exactly say okay you have to be like friends with these people or you have to like interact with them but just the fact that our student body is so diverse and has so many like different stories is a great benefit i think of studying here and it's like i remember in I think Kaliraya, like I was talking to you about like where you lived before and yeah. I just found that so fascinating because in my old school it was more or less just people, like nothing against people who have lived in the Philippines their whole life because that's basically me. Yeah. But it's, and me. Yeah, but it's refreshing to have like different perspectives and not just like in terms of, oh, you came from like these different countries, but also in terms of interests. Because here, I meet people who are passionate about like theater and art and really like into science and whatnot. Is that normal? Is that supposed to happen? What's the point? Technical Sorry, difficulties. difficulties. <laughs> technical difficulties. <laughs> it's just that one. Let me just turn this on airplane mode so no more disruptions. Yeah. All right. <laughs> what even was that? Someone, uh, someone's calling. Okay, uh, continue with that. Uh, sorry about that. It's okay. Um, so yeah, in that sense, like the internationalism and diversity that BSM has provided has been something that's really helped me also in expanding my mindset about the world and thinking, okay, I didn't know that things were like this or people solving these things in a certain way. So it would help. Okay. Well, after doing research, as I stated, can you please tell us more about It's a Girl Thing and how it feels to be a part of this big movement and wave of empowering women? <laughs> okay, so It's a Girl Thing is this initiative taken on by Globe Telecom to gather 12 young Filipino women who are rallying for change in their respective fields. And through this event, slash like, um, yeah, through this event, slash listicle that I was part of, I was able to meet really inspiring Filipino women who not are not only actresses and Olympic swimmers, but are also part of the academe and who also are doing some really important activism. Um, I was really honored to be asked to be part of the list because some of the young women there have really made strides in their field. Um, one of them, for example, has actually beaten Katie Ledecky in a race and like another girl who, it's just amazing, and another girl um, was sexually harassed in the LRT and yeah. from there started rallying for women's rights. Like instead of like keeping quiet about her experience, she spoke about it. And it's really humbling to be part of a list of women who are just making such a big difference. Right. Okay. Also, how does it feel to have an award winning essay on climate change? <laughs> it feels great. I'm not gonna lie. It feels uh -huh. great. Um I think that one of the reasons why I took ESS which yes. is a great class, right? Well, it's a great class. Incredible. Incredible, right? <laughs> um, Love it. I chose ESS because I'm really passionate about the environment. And I think that although in BSM we have this mindset that, okay, it's one thing to help out the environment. It's also another thing to really learn about it, which is why ESS, I think, provides a really good foundation of learning about what we can do to help the environment and really understanding ecology. So that essay sort of just sprang into my... Um, mind that okay wow climate change is really really a big issue yes but there's so much science behind it and there's still so much that we can do when i was in the uk for the debate and sort of like closing ceremonies of the competition mm -hmm. there was a speaker throughout her exact name catherine dr catherine something who spoke of the potential that us young people have in helping solve the climate problem mm -hmm. and that if more of the youth become climate scientists or just work towards beating climate change and maybe we can make strides in what our parents weren't able to fix. Yeah. Um, with your uh, interest in um, technology and, and uh, ESS, do you think there's like a link that you can make to like help both like women in technology and maybe like just the environment in general? Or? 
I think that there's definitely a link. And if you look at a lot of like different startups, different companies out there, they definitely do create links between seemingly disparate ideas. And I think although I'm not doing it now, if if there were to be a team of let's say women in tech working towards creating an app for environmentalism, I would totally be on board with that. But right now I do think that combining science journalism with like the just the growing publishing industry and like the potential for articles to be like not just trending online but as well as just really impact a lot of people through the internet. It's a really amazing thing. Like it sounds so cheesy but like I'm really glad to be like alive in this <laughs> period of time. It's it's cheesy but it's true because with the internet there's so much although there's so much bad that yeah. can be done with it, there's still so much good. And just the fact that for example, and as I've done in the past, I've gone in to meet women on like in tech online through interviews and through emails who live in like entirely different continents. Like I just find that incredibly exciting. And I hope that more young people realize how like we can use tech, you know, yeah. positively. Yeah. yeah. Just reading a resume here, it says that you've had regular <laughs> contributions to oh. the Manila Bulletin since yeah. you were ten years old. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. what is that like? I started writing for the Manila Bulletin uh, thanks to my old school that told me, okay, okay, if you like writing, why not take take it a step further and try like contributing for that publication? So when I tried out and I got in, I was first sent to this Jollibee Kids party. <laughs> it was really bad. Let me tell you that I was ten, and let's just say ten year old audio is not impressed. <laughs> it was really, it was a really like bad. Okay, maybe not. Maybe Jollibee might hate me. So maybe it was a very, very, um, it was a very interesting experience. (laughs) And with that, I learned how to write about things that I didn't want to write about. And when I started taking on more assignments, I had to go to like a Nickelodeon kids party. And then I had to do like a screening for like, and then yeah, after that, like my, my, um, sort of editor, she started sending me to like, movie premieres and such because she started seeing how like sort of committed I was to it so I started reaping the benefits I guess I got sent to better movies thank god (laughs) (laughs) um which resulted in me being able to not only meet other contributors and other writers and other like media network people but also get a taste of what it's like to be working as like a freelance writer and that built in me like a lot of really important principles like not just just writing about things that you're not interested in, but also working on a deadline and being like really accountable for what you do. In the sense that I remember, I think freshman year, I was sent to the Hunger Games, like Mockingjay premiere, premiere thing, just yeah. here locally. Um, and the thing is, my editor said that okay, you you can go to like this event, but you have to like submit the article two hours after you watch the movie. <laughs> And I was like, holy cow, okay, sure. I said yes, and that ended up being a really good experience because not only was I like put on a literal like ticking yeah. time bomb sure, after sure. the movie finished, but I was also able to really test my limits of how I cope with stress and really mm-hmm. how I deal with deadlines. So in hindsight, now that like we have a lot of IV deadlines and work, I don't get as stressed out about it now. So yeah. Yeah, um you know, well, we know that you play tennis, is that right? So, do you play competitively or is this just for fun? I started playing somewhat competitively a year ago. Um, I have a coach, um, Serena Aravalo. She's really great. She plays with the ISM team, so that's oh. a, bit, it's a bit controversial. Wow. <laughs> but I started training with her before I even found out I got into BSM because oh. I realized that. I really, really wanted to find a sport that would help me like get active, and I felt really Can bad. Can we just take a pause? Okay, sure, sure. One sec. Can you just make some space? <laughs> okay. Um... Dude, you need a new laptop. Bro, I have no space. Okay, and okay. go. Okay. Um. So I think. In, in about in freshman and sophomore year, I was really really intense about academics. I still I still kind of am, but yeah. <laughs> but as in like academics were sort of and like academics student council those types of activities were just my 
my main focus. Mm -hmm. And after some time, it got really tiring. And I thought that I need to like add a sport. And my dad suggested do doing tennis again so that I could not only like release stress and whatnot, but also become more balanced in the sense that I wouldn't just have like academics and whatever going for me and have like another way to enjoy myself. So I started because my parents both play tennis and my dad's the type of dad that doesn't play golf and just like <laughs> spends all his free time playing tennis. It was fun because I not only got to improve um, playing tennis for myself, yeah. but so that I could play I played doubles with my dad for a bit. That's like that's like bonding <laughs> stuff. And it was fun. Um I think overall, like, I really love tennis because it's a challenge that is different from when I faced like academic year with VTech. Yeah. Because it's all about men. It's not just about like what's happening mentally, but also like physically. Because I got really frustrated before because I wasn't running fast enough. Yeah. I wasn't hitting serves that were in most of the time. <laughs> and unique challenges like that differed very much from my day to day worries before playing tennis competitively, which usually ranged from like oh like tests and projects and deadlines so i started doing age group competitions i think six months after i started training competitively yeah. and i learned also the importance of failure and how you shouldn't like it sounds so cheesy but how you shouldn't like let it really get to you because i lost really badly <laughs> Like honestly, they call it being bageled in the sense that the score is six love, six love. Uh -huh. So it was really bad. And I think I learned to like toughen myself up in the sense that I can't always expect myself to put in work and see the desired output. And I think since the both of you do sports, like you can relate um, to that. Yeah, just a small hobby, yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah, just a just a small hobby. Yeah. Really yeah. Cool. Oh, maybe like once every two weeks. Oh, every yeah. time. Leisurely, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, although I can't say that I want to like pursue tennis mm -hmm. in college, I do say it's a big like part of my life and it's something that's kept me sane, to be frank. Yeah. Okay. Uh, since you're in our, my, in our B. Annie Han group, mm -hmm. uh, I know you have a big role in like associating the Filipino Toy Library. And like some people don't know, but like I would just like to ask um how did you get involved with it and like what really made you some like uh what's it called what's it called <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> really made you interested in um mm -hmm. being associates with the filipino toy library and like helping them wherever mm -hmm. you do and stuff like that in about the eighth grade i think um my school my old school had this initiative wherein they'd gather like the class presidents and the student officers and sort of have them all work together to do an outreach project with the school and a nonprofit. So at that time I remembered I remember my dad mentioned something about oh why don't you work with Philippine Toy Library? Because his college friend founded it. And when I dug more into the idea, the more sort of excited I became about it. Because as I guess, okay, just like looking at our li BSM library, it's so full of resources, yeah. honestly. And it's it's more it's more than what we actually, what, what, what I actually see people use at least. Yeah, oh, for sure. And when we did an ocular with uh, my old school, we, I was able to see how public schools in the Philippines actually look like. Because it's one thing that you'll see it on the news yeah. or hear people say, oh wow, the Philippine education system, not enough funding, you know? And it's really another thing to go there, see the kids, and see how there are barely any books to the point where three or four kids are sharing the tattered up copy. Yeah. And that really made me appreciate all of, like the resources I've had growing up and how you know we get to go to school and know that there's gonna be food on the table. So partnering with PTL for short has been such a good experience, I think. And it's something that I want to be able to continue to do. So which is why like when I transferred here and I heard about the Bayanihan project, I said, Okay guys, why don't we give back to a community that doesn't have as many resources as we do and not as many opportunities. Yeah. Okay, just like a couple more questions before we finish up. You've been mentioning your dad a lot, so would yeah. you say he's had a, a big impact on your life? Yeah, my dad has definitely had a big impact. Um, he used to be a banker, but then when my mom gave birth, and I'm an only child, uh -huh. so my dad decided that he wanted to really take on like the 
hands-on parenting approach uh-huh. and he didn't want to be the sort of father that would always be out of and course, yeah. would barely yeah. see me and I think that's that's one decision that he made that has definitely I think made the biggest impact in my life in the sense that it's we like to joke around it's like we we the be the like an American family in the sense that he picks me up from school he actually my my parents cook like we don't uh-huh. have like a yaya yeah, yeah, or a driver that's a shame bro yeah you really should <laughs> So like I wash dishes, I do laundry and like all that fun stuff. And it's definitely been like character building uh-huh. and it has prepared me for college. <laughs> uh-huh. Just the last question. Just in general, s- women stereotypes. Uh-huh. What are your thoughts, opinions on it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm flashing back to like your art project thing. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's what started our friendship with. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. Um so Stereotypes. I think being teenagers is very easy for us to make assumptions about other people, what their stories are, like the things that they go through on a day-to-day basis. And stereotypes, especially the stereotypes that women face, can be especially detrimental. Not to say that the ones that men face are, aren't bad as well, because because a lot of them are horrible. But the ones that women face especially tend to impact them a lot in terms of how they perceive themselves and how they interact with others. Um, the ads that a lot of women see online and see just like out in public tend to really shape like how they view themselves. And growing up, I think I had like this expectation of what high school would be like and what the type of person I would be like. And I think that those stereotypes really built like false expectations. And if we're not careful, and if a lot of women aren't careful, we tend to fall into those stereotypes as well. The yeah. stereotypes of yeah. women not being good in STEM or not being capable of math or science and whatnot. Not being capable of doing sports and like playing, I don't know, football or something like that. Well. But I think that what's really great right now is that you have people like the like the, um, the U.S. women's football team who are really yeah, rallying for their yeah. equal pay and they're speaking out against the inequalities that they face. Yeah. Um, I think Venus Williams, like in the tennis world at least, she successfully got like a major tennis tournament to give men and women equal pay, which, uh-huh. yeah, which really made balance in the tennis world. So, yeah, I guess to cycle back, um, I think stereotypes are things that challenge women, but they shouldn't be what define us, okay. you know? And I think that goes to show for any stereotype. So what, despite like what other people say about you, about like a given person, no matter what people may assume about your day-to-day life, like you're the only person who gets to decide like who you really are. So yeah, that's okay. that's just what I think. Well, last question. Let's keep it short. Um, we know you're only 16 years of age. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you don't have that much lab experience. Uh-huh. But I mean, judging from all this. <laughs> Seems like you've been through quite a lot. Yeah. So if you'd give maybe like a sentence of advice to a girl about life in general, life what would it be? A sentence. Let's keep a it sentence. Okay, wow. Just a sentence. Yeah. <laughs> Two sentences sent- max. Two sentences max. Okay. Um. It's got to be cringy. It's got to be cute. It's got to be. It's got to be, <laughs> be Tumblr. Yeah, it gotta be. It doesn't have to be a quotable quote. Gotta Whatever be. you know, just uh-huh. two sentences. Uh huh. Finish okay. up. Always have grit and and live past your stereotype. Ooh, that's well, a good one. Well, Audrey, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. You're this welcome, this guys. has been the William and Daniel show. Thanks for having. Oh, and lastly, no if you just click your fingers. <laughs> Just click, like, click, click here. Like that. We'll put any like social media, anything Ooh. that you want to follow. Click support. again. Yeah. Go on. Click. There you go. Right there. <laughs> so I mean, make sure to follow Audrey's social media. You know, she might be the next female president, of course. Ooh. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Thank you for meeting us today. Uh, how Thank horrible! You. Thanks for having <laughs> me, guys. See you guys later. <laughs>